In an earlier video, I showed you how to convert a Sima X5C quadcopter to a real-time video FPV ship. Well, when I went and took this out for a spin, the first thing I noticed was how nice the video was, but how poor my control range was. I lost control in as little as five meters away. 15 feet is not a very long flight, and I was finding my control in different rooms to be intermittent. Therefore, a control upgrade was necessary. I'm Alex Grieve better known as IB Crazy from Video Aerial Systems, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to upgrade the control of your Sima quadcopter to give it six times the range of the stock radio, and it only costs a few dollars to do. The bulk of most radio communication comes down to the antennas, and the antenna inside this radio is a quarter wave monopole, and it is just another word for junk. So all we are going to do is solder in a simple coaxial cable extension and that will allow us to screw on any aftermarket antenna. But I'm also going to show you how to make a simple dipole that will increase the range by a factor of six. And this is very, very simple there to build. There are some posts and some YouTube videos that say extending the antenna on the multi-copter to 62 millimeters or two and a half inches will increase your range. I tried and I saw no improvement at all. In fact, I might have seen a five to 10% reduction in range. So you want to leave the stock antenna the way it is and we'll focus on just the control. And I know what you're thinking, well, wasn't the X1 compatible with a Turnigy 9X radio? Well, yeah, it was. And this is a nice radio to fly your X1, but this is not compatible with this for some reason, and that reason I don't know. So we're going to have to take apart our radio and make it into a much higher performance machine. To do this, we're simply going to need a coaxial cable extension. I'm using RG316 cable. You're going to need one with a SMA female on one end and an SMA male on the other end. You're simply going to cut this in half, the male end will be used to make the antenna, and the female end will be connected into your radio. For RG316 cable, I find a pair of wire strippers with a 14-16 gauge wire stripper works great to remove the outer jacket. You're going to want to remove about half an inch of the outer jacket and expose it up. Take your soldering iron and tin up the shielding very lightly. You don't want a thick coating of solder here as you're intending to cut this. All right, now take your wire strippers and strip off about a quarter of an inch of the shield. Just wiggle it around and it should pop free. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the insulation from the center conductor. Again, using wire strippers, leave as little as possible but just enough so that there's not a short when you bend the wire over the top. Now it's time to make our elements. I'm using 22 gauge wire here, but you can use anything between 18 and 26 gauge. Simply strip off about a quarter of an inch and then bend the end approximately 90 degrees. This will then get soldered to the shield of your antenna cable. Once done, tin up the center element of your antenna cable. Then take your other wire, again with about a quarter of an inch stripped off the end, and solder it to your antenna cable. Now comes the tuning part. Each element has to be exactly one and one quarter inches from the center to the tip. I'm using a caliper and trimming it off with a pair of wire cutters, but a tape measure is usually sufficient. Both the active element, the center, and the counterpoise, which is the grounded end, must be the same length. The last step is to add a little bit of protection to our dipole. I'm using hot glue here, but epoxy works great. Be sure when you're applying it to check the joints and make sure that your center element and your shield are not shorted together, as the dipole elements should be electrically isolated. This adds a little bit of protection for radio getting banged around. Now we're going to move on to the SMA female end. This is the end that gets connected to your radio. This time you're going to only take off about a quarter of an inch of the outer jacket of the coaxial cable. 
Again, tin it up like we did before, very lightly. And then strip off between an eighth and three sixteenths of an inch of the shield. And then as close as you possibly can, strip the insulation off of the center element. Make sure you clear as much insulation out of the way as possible as where you have to solder this to the radio, there isn't much room to work. Once done, bend it 90 degrees as close to the joint as okay, possible. Okay, now on to modifying the radio. The first thing you need to do is to desolder the junk antenna. That's fairly simple to do. Simply add a little heat and pull up till it releases. With the antenna removed, it's time to add our extension cable. The shield gets soldered to the pad in the rear, whereas the center element gets soldered to the pad in the front. When soldering these down, be careful not to short these two areas out or it will not work. As a final step, add a little bit of strain relief to the circuit board in the form of hot glue or epoxy. This will keep any mechanical motion from damaging the delicate solder joints against the circuit board and keep it nice and secure in the room. With the radio reassembled, there's one last thing you should do, and that's provide a little bit of support to this cable. I just used computer printer paper, fold it over a few times, and then wrap it tightly around your new made antenna cable. Once wrapped, trim it to fit, then push it inside the radio. This provides a little bit of support for the cable and for the antenna. Again, you don't want to stress out the solder joint inside. Then, Screw on your t antenna, keeping it vertically polarized. If you fly this way, this would be vertical polarization to match the antenna vertically polarized on our helicopter. Now for more people who are looking for a little bit more performance indoors, I'm finding that a cloverleaf gives slightly better performance indoors and when you violate the Fresnel zone, i.e. fly behind objects. It's much harder to DIY, but because you have the SMA port now on your radio, you can simply buy one if you like. In fact, you can use just about any aftermarket antenna if you don't feel comfortable making your own. The dipole gives approximately 70 to 75 meters worth of range, where the clover leaf is limited to about 60 meters. Compared to the vehicle's original maximum range of about eight, this is a huge improvement. I'm Alex Grieve, and keep your wings in the sky.